HEED stands for Home Energy Efficient Design. HEED is a free software tool that runs on Mac and Windows computers. It is intended to help homeowners, designers, builders, architects, and engineers design more energy efficient and more comfortable homes. This is the second tutorial in the series and it will show you in more detail how to download and install HEED and how to use HEED's simple basic options to create and refine a home that meets or exceeds the California Energy Code or even a home that uses zero net energy. When you first download HEED from the Energy Design Tools website, uh, it will automatically install um, an icon on your desktop, then will launch the program and show you this screen. Uh, when you click Next, uh, the first time through, this will be the only option you see, Demo. Um, this will allow you to see all of the screens that are in HEAT, all of the design options that are available to you. But at any point, you can begin to input your own data and it will become um, a basic scheme. This is the initial design screen in which you'll put in the specifications for your building. HEAT will use these few pieces of information to design a code compliant building and then to design a building that is slightly more energy efficient. So let's start with a um, brand new home, although you could do remodels and additions. We'll do a single family house, but you could do townhouses or apartment. Let's leave it at two stories and let's just change it to 1600 square feet. And we'll use a sloped roof and he comes with the climate data for all 16 California climate zones. We'll use climate zone 8, or climate zone 9, which is uh, Westwood's UCLA's location. Uh, but you could input um, actually um, zip codes from many California locations, or if you're elsewhere in the United States or in the Northern Hemisphere, you can download and include climate data uh, from the EPW site and HEAT has an automatic link for that. This asks you if you want to attach a garage. We'll say no for the right now. And now it's calculating Scheme 1 and Scheme 2 for all 8,760 hours of the year. It does a one hour um, heat balance equation for the entire building. This is the home energy rating screen and here we see the performance of the two schemes that he uh, has just calculated. By the way, periodically he pops up these uh, information uh, uh, screens to tell you, give you a clue about what to do next. Because I'm chattering away so much here, um, we're just going to ignore these, but they may be helpful to you as you work on your own. Scheme 1 is the code compliance scheme, has a rating of 100. Scheme 2 is a slightly more energy efficient scheme. In this case, it's 89%. Now we're going to move ahead and create a new Scheme 3. And this is the first of the schemes that, that the user um, designs. But right now, you can see we've just made a copy of Scheme 2. And so it's, here, it's duplicating uh, exactly what Scheme 2 um, how, how Scheme 2 perform. In this particular case, um, it's showing the dollar costs of annual operation. This is the energy efficient design screen. It's an analog for building comfort. The green bar is an indication of how many hours during the year the building is comfortable without using any heating or cooling energy. Uh, the blue, of course, is air conditioning and the, the red is the number of hours uh, in which fuel is used for heating. Um, this total height represents all 8,760 hours per, the, per year. As you can see, Scheme 2 is slightly more uh, passive than Scheme 1. We also have here a set of design guidelines that can help you design for, in this case, Climate Zone 9. This is the floor planner screen where you can draw in the uh, details of your first design. 
Um, let's put a little porch out on the front of this building uh, here. And let's, um, uh, I don't know, we can put some paving out here. Let's put a front sidewalk. And uh, let's put uh, a street walk here. Um, we can put some trees. Um, these trees will be counted for shading. Um, let's put a little one out in the front, and uh, we may put some. We could put a. We can put a little orchard in the back. Let's let's add a few more. Um, the other thing that you see here is the windows that have been picked out by Heed for this code compliant, actually for this more energy efficient building. Uh, and they were instantly delivered to the curb all the way around. Um, they can be cl clicked and dragged onto the, the site, onto the building. And uh, we have another screen that makes that a little bit easier. Let's add a neighbor uh, here on the west side, um, something like that. Um, and I suppose we could add a garage if we wanted. Let's put it back here. Make it a little closer to the building. And I guess I'll make it about 20 feet wide. Each of these squares, by the way, is four foot by four foot. Put a little breezeway to get into the house. Um, we can now move upstairs, and let's let's erase a little bit of this building to keep the square footage the same. So we added uh, four cells worth of space downstairs, and we'll take four cells worth away from upstairs. We'll give the neighbor a little bit of three to a little bit of height. Um, we will, uh, let's see, make some taller trees, I suppose. We can, you can add new tall trees or you can make some of the existing trees uh, tall. Uh, we can put a couple of big trees over here if we want. Um, Let's see. Let's go back downstairs and put a driveway in because I don't like the idea of this garage sitting out there in the grass all by itself. Um, but this is basically the idea, and you can go ahead and do a lot more detail with planning if you'd like. This is the orientation screen, which allows you to reorient this building in any direction. But right now, we'll just leave it facing due south. This is the window door sunshade design screen where you can add or remove um, anything that you'd like. Uh, let's, let's, for example, put in a front window. And as you can see, it comes in as a one by one foot window. Uh, here it is here, I guess. And so let's see if we can click and drag it to whatever size we want. Um, it's probably a little too big. We'll make it a little bit smaller. We're going to put these on either side of the front door. This is the front door. This is the front window. And as you can see, whenever you do that, you pop up uh, the data that you need. Um, we could add or change anything else, but let's just move ahead. Um, here is one of the windows that I just designed, so let's put it right here. I'd like another one, and this is what you can do. You can click and drag them off that screen. Let's try and, this is the tricky part, find them beside it, um, on either side of the door. Um, this is um, where you click, click and drag windows. This is a particular uh, attribute of the California Energy Code. Um, uh, it it's represents an area that must be left available for solar PV panels or solar domestic hot water panels uh, unobstructed to the south. 
so it's represented by this uh, transluc transparent area and as you can see we have enough area on our roof for future um, panels um, we're not going to go take time now to put the rest of the um, windows on the building. In this tutorial we're going to just concentrate on the um, options that are available under basic design. These are the kinds of things that most people will be able to understand. Um, there are other more complex data input screens in advanced design and we'll show you some of those in later tutorials. Uh, so far we've gone through window layout. This is the glass type screen. Um, we're, and if we had clicked this button, it would give us code compliant windows. These are the default windows that the code requires. You can use different windows if you'd like. Um, in this case, um, it says, it warns us that this window that we've just now picked is not a code compliant window. But the reality is, if you, no matter what you pick, if your total building uses less energy than a code compliant building, you can use whatever you like. Uh, it's very hard to do that without using pretty good windows. In this case, we're using windows that have the same U value, that is the effect on conductivity of heat flowing into and out of the window. Um, but it has a much higher solar heat gain coefficient, which means that it takes in much more uh, solar radiation. So this window is a good passive solar window. Um, there are many other choices and you can look at them and try them if you'd like. Uh, we're going to stick with the um, clear double pane low E uh, with an insulated fiberglass frame. Um, another screen I want to mention is one that's not strictly speaking in the list of uh, basic design options that we're talking about in this tutorial, but rather it's over here under Evaluate. Uh, it's the screen that's titled Shadows and Sunlight. And as you can now see, uh, it moves the sun relative to your site for all 12 months of the year and for all of the sunlit hours during the day. When you, a window is placed at the curb, uh, its heat gain and loss and its radiation gain are contributed to the building, whether or not it's at the curb or whether or not it's been moved up and attached to the building. However, if there are things like trees and neighbors and other things that actually shade your building, um, the windows at the curb don't really know about that. However, as we saw in the prior uh, window design screen, you can specify things like overhangs and you could specify left and right fins if you wanted. Uh, and so when you click and drag this onto the uh, building facade, you'll see that the fins and the overhangs uh, come along and are attached and dimensioned as you have specified. Notice that now we're in June and the sunlight from that overhang is completely shading the window. So it's doing a, a very effective job of, of making sure that these passive solar windows on the south side of our building uh, are not overheating the building in the summer. In the winter, as we saw earlier, uh, these windows get a great deal of direct gain. So this is why we want, on the south side of the building, we want glass glazing that has a high solar heat gain coefficient, that is to say that admits a lot of solar radiation. On the west side, we want just the opposite. Frankly, in climates like the desert climates, we also want the opposite, which is to say we want small windows. We want very low solar heat gain coefficients, which block radiant gain uh, into the building. So in fact, using the prior screens that we just looked at, you can have one type of glazing on the south side of your building and a totally different type of glazing on the other sides, principally the west side, which is going to be the, the most difficult. This is the insulation screen. So let's think about this. Maybe we would like to try to add better insulation. 
So let's go to the command control hub for HEED, which is the library um, screens. And these options are um, apply only to schemes. These options apply to projects. And projects are made up of up to nine different schemes. You can have as many projects as you'd like. These are some other options that are available in under the library screen. Um, this is where you install weather data from the EPW weather data site and you can change the color options on the various screens if you like. Let's copy scheme 3 and add um, better insulation. So we're going to make a copy of scheme 3 and we're going to call it copy 3 better insulation. Okay, so now he is copying the scheme we just made with the um, neighbor and the garage, etc, etc. Uh, as you can see, that scheme was a little bit less energy efficient than scheme 2, which is what it was built on. Now we're going to go to basic and go down to the insulation screen and change this. Let's uh, make it, um, oh, about one and a half times better insulation. This is not quite super insulation, but this adds a little bit more insulation uh, all the way around the building. Um, we could have, um, the radiant barriers were required by code in Climate Zone 9, so we'll leave those in the attic. This is now calculating our new Scheme 4 with better insulation. Um, you can see that our new Scheme 4 with better insulation has made a slight improvement uh, over Scheme 3. Um, let's think about something else that we could do to improve its performance. Um, one of the options in, um, well, let's look at these others first. Um, we probably won't change the design of the walls, although certainly we could. You could add SIPs or change them to a high mass wall. Um, we could change the construction. Right now it's a sloped roof, uh, naturally ventilated, with, um, and it's not a cool roof. Cool roofs are sometimes required in some zones in California, but apparently not in climate zone 9. Uh, the next one we see is floor construction, and we have a slab on grade, which is probably good for passive uh, thermal storage, and this happens to be carpeted. This is the infiltration screen that speaks to the tightness of the building. The new California Energy Code has uh, increased the requirements for building tightness, so the infiltration will be less. The specific leakage area has now got to be less. The air changes at 50 pascals pressure difference is five air changes per hour now. Uh, we could, to tighten up our building still further, um, design it so that the HVAC system has no ducts, that is to say it's a ductless system, or that all the ducts are inside the insulated envelope. Uh, we could make it even tighter uh, by saying that uh, we were going to have a HERS inspector check the building at a couple of places during con construction to ensure quality insulation installation. Um, and that would should give us a 1.5 specific le leakage area with only three air changes per hour at 50 pascals. Let's do this. Let's make a copy of this Scheme 4 and try out even more um, infiltration control. So here we are, copy. We're going to copy Scheme 4. We're going to call it Copy 4 of 4. And it's going to be called, um, I don't know, Better Air Seal. Again, heat is calculating all 8,760 hours of the year at this climate for this particular building. We're going to go back to where we were at infiltration, and we're going to change it to 
Mm, let's do this one, hers verified, and do a recalculation. Now we will have, uh, we'll see what the effect of that slightly better air seal is going to be on the building. And again, as you can see, we're slowly nibbling away at the uh, building's uh, overall performance. Going back to the options under basic design, uh, the next one is called ventilation cooling. Uh, this one uh, is, it gives you a number of different options. Um, we could ignore the whole thing by clicking on this um, uh, button. Um, we could say that the building only will allow very gentle breezes of up to 160 feet per minute, which is essentially not noticeable, barely noticeable. Or we could allow strong breezes, which a strong air motion, which is something you would feel as a nice gentle breeze. We can keep the windows closed or open. Um, we can eliminate fans, but in this case, a code minimum whole house fan is going to be provided. This is a slightly small to normal size, but we could put in an even larger fan. And of course, we could add uh, ceiling fans if we'd like. Um, and the difference is whether these fans are automatically controlled by prox by uh, occupancy sensors or not. Um, so the ones that are automatically controlled will run probably fewer hours. From here on, let's uh, just jump ahead. Uh, I think by now the process is pretty clear. One of the great advantages of heat is that it lets you try all sorts of different design options and see graphically how they compare with your prior or best schemes. Um, you can compare on the basis of energy. You can compare them on the basis of cost, of annual operating costs. You can compare them on the basis of, uh, we'll show you carbon dioxide. You can uh, compare them on the basis of uh, human thermal comfort. There are a variety of criterion against which you can compare your schemes. Um, the process is to, as you saw, go to the library, um, make a copy of the best scheme that you have up to now, uh, name the, that scheme, uh, and also name what you're going to change. Uh, in this case, uh, this one was copied from Scheme 5, and we changed natural ventilation. And here are the changes that we made to make this building a better naturally ventilated building. So now we are making a copy of Scheme 6. Let's call it uh, Try a Heat Pump. We'll see what a heat pump might do for us. Uh, we go back to basic design, go down to heating and cooling. Uh, here are all the options for heating systems. No furnace, an older pre-code furnace, uh, Energy Star, um, best available technology, or we can sometimes use an electric furnace or baseboard heating. Uh, for cooling, we could use no air conditioner, we could use an older inefficient model, or the code, energy code minimum model, Energy Star, which is going to be a better air conditioner, best available technology, which can get very good indeed, or we could try an evaporative cooler. Let's, however, select um, a heat pump, which is going to provide us both heating and cooling using electrical energy. And let's um, just use a code minimum heat pump to keep the efficiencies roughly comparable. This is now calculating appliances and plug load changes that we'll make for all 8,760 hours of the year again. Uh, let's go back down here to appliance and plug loads. Um, this includes um, gas for cooking, and this is electricity for cooking for the for the oven in this case. So if you had an electric oven, you would uh, add the amount of energy it used and reduce the amount of energy the gas oven used. Do the same thing for dryer. Here's a gas dryer or an electric dryer. You could leave it in or take it out, and here's our plug loads. Let's do this. Let's um, put in Energy Star appliances. Uh, 
and let's assume we've done a calculation of the um, stickers that the uh, that are required on all appliances and let's say we've reduced it minus um, I don't know 400 which is little less than a third of the total building plug loads um, and let's recalculate that one we jumped ahead now we have made a copy of scheme 8 and we call it solar systems this is the solar systems design screen it's under basic design um, right now we're, we only are doing the code required solar ready roof area which says that there's a, some area someplace on our building site that will accommodate about 150 square feet of unshaded area for future solar systems let's think about actually putting them in in this case we'll put in a 2 kilowatt system which is actually a little bit small it's only about 10 panels uh, requires a little bit more than the available area that we had reserved um, the average solar system in California is 3.8 kilowatts which is almost twice as large uh, but we'll use this slightly smaller system. Uh, the, this system, by the way, is a theoretical system. It's going to be more efficient than anything you can actually buy off the shelf. Um, let's also put some solar hot water in here. Um, we're going to put a solar hot water system. S solar systems are pretty well sized to the number of people. There's no point in making it any bigger because you can't sell electric or solar hot water back to the grid in any way. With PV systems, if you put in a much bigger system, and if your local utility agrees, you can sell the excess energy back to the utility when, that you don't use. So adding bigger than required systems might have some economic benefit. No economic benefit accrues if you add a bigger than necessary solar hot water system. So we'll design this type of system that's appropriate for this house that we input which was 1600 square feet. Let's recalculate and see how much of an impact we had. Well as you can see um, those two changes made a considerable impact and now we're down at 29% uh, of the uh, typical code compliant house. Uh, in the year 2020 all of the new residential construction in California is going to be zero net energy which means as far as this chart is concerned they'll all be sitting down here at zero. Let's take a look at um, the other screens, for instance, energy cost screen uh, shows you that we are basically reducing the cost except for the big drop that we did, we produced when we used natural ventilation. That's the lowest cost scheme that we have produced uh, so far except for adding uh, solar systems. Another thing we can look at is site energy use or energy use intensity, EUI. It's in KBTU per square foot per year. Uh, as you may recall, the bar that is below the line represents on-site collection and the bar that is above the line represents on-site consumption, which usually is purchased energy. So when you have a case where you're collecting as much energy on site as you're actually using you have a zero net energy building in this case it's our building is a zero net electricity building uh, here on the fuel side uh, the area below the line is the uh, equivalent um, fuel or heating that we're collecting by virtue of solar hot water so our solar hot water system is eh, about half of what our um, water heater is using. We could have installed a much more efficient water heater and brought this down. Here is the gas appliances and as you see we have no fuel for heating because we're running 
over here we're running our um, electric heat pump system. This shows that we are steadily bringing down our on-site uh, fuel consumption and here we have greatly increased our on-site fuel on-site energy collection. So the energy use intensity of this final project, although you can't see it because it's off the screen, is 29 percent of the original um, code compliant building. So we've done a pretty good job in creating a, a what it approaches a zero net energy building. Another measure of performance that we can look at on this screen is uh, CO2 production. Uh, this is the equivalent amount of carbon that our building is contributing to the atmosphere. As you can see, our code compliant building is producing about three, about 6,000 pounds, which is about three tons of CO2. This is about what your car produces. Finally, when we get to scheme number nine, although you can't see it, it's off the screen, the net production when we subtract what we're collecting on site is about 1,270 pounds of CO2. So we've made a significant reduction in the contribution of this building to um, carbon pollution. The next thing we can look at is the energy efficient design screen and again you can see that this building has a great percentage of the time in which it free runs or is a passive building and only a few hours in which heating and cooling is required. In this particular case where we tried natural ventilation, um, the uh, black area indicates the times when the air temperature was outside the comfort range, but in fact for all hours of the year occupants are always inside the comfort range. So if there are things like night setbacks or if there are things like fan cooling in which the effective temperature may be in the comfort range but the actual sensible dry bulb temperature may be above the comfort range, you'll see a small percentage of hours here that are technically outside the dry bulb temperature comfort range. In this case it's about 218 hours. This concludes our second tutorial in the series. Here's the website you can use uh, to download free copies of HEED and all of our other software. HEED was developed by the Energy Design Tools Group at UCLA. It was funded by California ratepayers. It was produced under a contract with the California Energy Commission. Future tutorials will explain HEED's other features and how to design more energy efficient and more comfortable buildings. Thank you for watching.